video. I hope that what I am going to talk to you about today is going to help you. Maybe you will see some parallels in your Phalaenopsis collection and basically put your mind at rest as well. If you are not getting your Phalaenopsis to bloom the way you had her when she first caught your eye in the shop over there and then you brought her home. So my Phalaenopsis collection that I have now is approximately four years old. Some of them may be three, but that's not here nor there. What you're looking at right now is my Phalaenopsis. No ID, but she has a specific ID. Her name is Ninja Yellow. She's a gift from the Orchid Room back in the day we did a plant swap and she sent me a phalaenopsis because I was having difficulty with getting my phalaenopsis to be happy in LECA and self-watering and she grew her fowls super super successfully in LECA and self-watering so she gifted me an established LECA and self-watering phalaenopsis so that I would have one that is established and used to it and secondly possibly observe what I'm doing different with my other ones. So that's the history behind Ninja Yellow. And here we are. She has a spike, but she's lost all her buds. With the exception of a little something here at the tip, but I am not very, very hopeful about that. So let me just preempt right off the bat if you're finding the same thing with your Phalaenopsis and you're not getting the same bloom display show that you had when you first bought her and everything you've done year after year after year, it doesn't work. We're going to go through several examples in my collection. If some of them correlate with you, well, guess what? Things happen and our climate or our circumstances, our environment may not be so perfect. Bringing me to the first point that I have had to accept in the past years is that my conditions, my climate will never ever match what these orchids had when they were first created and grown for the market. I do not have ideal light. I do not have ideal humidity and possibly even my fertilizer levels may be completely off and I certainly do not have the hormones. So for me to go and expect that year in year out my Phalaenopsis orchids are going to bloom repeatedly with the way I bought them at the store, that is an expectation that I can't live up to. But having no blooms at all after having grown a spike, that has a lot to do with light levels. My next point, light levels can be so varied in different climates and here in southern Spain I have a lot of light. And guess what? Phalaenopsis orchids are not given enough credit for just how much light that they need in order for them to bloom. And we're still going to stick with Ninja Yellow because I am getting to know this orchid more and more. She is not the same as another complex Phalaenopsis hybrid. They are not all the same. Phalaenopsis complex hybrids are usually the ones that we say they don't need a lot of light to bloom. And that is true. They do not need a lot of light to bloom. But to have them as dark as I have had mine in the last six months, that is not adequate either. I used to supplement with lights during the winters in the past. And even though they were not directly under supplemental lighting, they were, you know, not that far away. And they got a little bit here and there with the reflection of the walls helping along. But this year, no light levels were ever going to be adequate enough for my Phalaenopsis complex hybrids to bloom in any way shape or form profusely. So if my conditions do not change for the winter of 22-23 then the light levels will continue to stay low and I can pretty much expect maybe three or four blooms from the other Phalaenopsis and if that is what they would like to give me I will be very very grateful. Do not underestimate how much light Phalaenopsis complex hybrids can tolerate. We are not talking about direct sun causing the leaves to burn, but if you have bright, bright shade, which in the summer, strangely enough, I do not have because of the angle of the sun being so high that the grow space area where my Phalaenopsis live is pretty much deep shade. And that is not adequate enough for a Phalaenopsis to be happy and to be able to bloom profusely. The brightest light possible without burning the leaves is perfect for a Phalaenopsis hybrid. And if you have the opportunity to move your Phalaenopsis hybrid into brighter light, I encourage you to do so. 
Having addressed the perfect conditions that our Phalaenopsis complex hybrids were grown in prior to coming to the garden center or wherever we bought them from, that would include fertilizer levels. I am very, very cautious with my Phalaenopsis complex hybrids to push them to the fertilizer levels that they possibly could tolerate because I am still making sure that whatever increases that I make in my fertilizer concentration, that there will be no salt buildup on the top of my media. I have super low humidity and usually when the roots grow out of the stem of these complex hybrids, the first thing they reach is the leka. And if that is covered in salt or there's any kind of accumulation, well, if you have a hesitant root grower like here, my little champion lightning, that will be a problem. The root tips will burn. So being conservative on the fertilizer level will also result in fewer blooms. And and the longevity of the blooms will also suffer instead of being in bloom for three to four months it will also mean that maybe it'll only be a six to eight week bloom cycle for a spike and a phalaenopsis that doesn't get enough fertilizer level so in my case i fertilize at 300 parts per million super super conservative throughout the winter which is probably also a result that my blooms are not lasting as long this year, including what I mentioned earlier. However, the long-term health of the orchid is my main focus. So if I am sacrificing certain pleasures out of a phalaenopsis, then at least my orchid will be alive. These orchids are warm to hot growers and there is nothing warm to hot in my climate from mid-November and this year all the way up to almost the end of April. And with the evaporative cooling of my media it is also a detriment because the roots are cooler than the ambient air so if you have a similar problem that you feel that you're not fertilizing enough during the winter and your conditions are a little bit more favorable temperature wise for these orchids then i would recommend upping your fertilizer level very very slowly and seeing how the orchid is capable of taking in the quantity you're giving it without any salt buildup forming at the surface. Now that it is summer, of course I can be a little bit more gung-ho about the fertilizer, but that doesn't change the fact that we've had this result now this year that my little Phalaenopsis is a reluctant little bloomer, but she has also been through a lot. And the fact that she's alive and showing leaves like this, she's a major, major step in the right direction. But I have to put a disclaimer out there. There's that word again, B-U-T. But if you cannot provide higher light levels and you will up and increase your fertilizer levels throughout the winter, then I would say don't do that. More fertilizer during the winter will not do anything to the vegetative growth. Low light levels and more fertilizer in a combination will only result in a spike getting very, 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 very long reaching for the light, but it will not result in more blooms. The bloom count will still be much, much less because the light levels could not match the amount of fertilizer being put into the orchid. So make sure that in future, if you're upping your light levels, you can up your fertilizer levels as well, and the balance will remain. The fact will be the orchid will grow a great spike with a lot of blooms because she's got the two working in harmony for her. So here's an example of a Phalaenopsis harlequin that by her very nature, her makeup is a massive orchid. She is huge and will produce long spikes but this spike is something that she would do even though she has not had 300 parts per million of fertilizer during the winter however we can again see here that there's hardly any bloom count on this spike but this now segues into the point that a possible pest infestation will also take out your blooms let's face her at least so we can see the blooms She's gorgeous. Anyway, any kind of pest will take out the bloom, especially if you've got thrips or you have, for example, mealybugs. In the winter, everything is a little bit short-handed, including the food outside, and these pests really enjoy the nice, warm, humid climate that we provide for our orchids. So watch out for pests, and if there have been any issues in the months leading up to a blooming, then it is possible that the buds will not form and your orchid won't bloom. Now it's not just the critters with lots and lots of legs that I consider a pest. I consider human error a pest. 
and a nuisance as well. If, like me, you are a little bit clumsy and, um, yes, you keep popping off the buds as they form when you're working with your orchid, then, of course, <laughs> needless to say, your bloom count will be much less as well. So, <laughs> try to be careful with your spike, and this I say as a note to self. <laughs> We have a gorgeous Phalaenopsis doing really, really well in our media. Nothing should be a problem. We had absolutely no pest issues. And well, yes, we had very low light levels. We have a fabulous spike. We had awesome buds forming and then prunes. We've got prunes. Why are there prunes on my Phalaenopsis spike? Well, draft. Where she lived over the winter, especially leading up to April, round about there, when I could open the terrace door a little bit, it seemed like the angle of the draft, the way it sort of swept through the rack area to the far end where she was living, was such that she objected. This is the first winter where she was a little bit lower. She wasn't on the top shelf with all the other Phalaenopsis. She was down on the rack next to the summer bloomers. I was trying to up her light levels to be closer to the glass. Well, there will be no hot kiss blooms in ninja orchids this year, unfortunately. So drafts, be super, super careful. I have learned my lesson, but will I repeat it next year? If I have no choice because I have a lack of space, seeing as all my phalaenopsis are doing so well, woohoo, when it comes to vegetative growth, they're doing well, this orchid may not actually have the space for the top shelf where she bloomed for me year after year after year. This orchid also never gave me more than nine blooms per spike, so it's not like I was expecting a bigger blooming this year, but I certainly wasn't expecting prunes for the lack of a better term. So if this happens to one of your reliable bloomers, did you change the position of the orchid year in, year out? Or did a draft catch the buds and well, which resulted in bud blast? For my next example, I'm showcasing my Phalaenopsis no ID, but we call her here Sweetheart. Just opened her first bloom. The example here is a branching flower spike. Now, I prefer not to cut my spikes off all the way to the end. I like to make sure that at least the part that isn't brown stays on the orchid for as long as possible so that the orchid can absorb the rest of the spike with all its nutrients. But <laughs> what happens when an orchid doesn't absorb its spike? It grows a branch and branches do not provide a nice high bloom count. They are somewhat secondary. I just don't like cutting my Phalaenopsis spike all the way to the base unless they have absorbed it themselves. So I do risk a branch and with that I also get a smaller bloom count. But we have the example over here. I have a brand new spike that she grew for us this season and well, I have three buds to show for. This orchid can easily, easily produce 10 to 14 blooms on a single spike but once again, we have the light levels that were not adequate. At least she grew a spike. Imagine now as well, if we had upped the fertilizer with lower light levels, this spike would be double as long and still only have three buds at the end. So for the length of the spike, there's enough proportion in here with her three buds. The problem now is, will these buds blast or will they bloom out? Because clearly I have moved her away from the location where she was at in order to film her. And also all my fowls today are getting a seaweed and cow mag soak. And for the health of the orchid, I will bring them out where I have space, where I run less risk into harming them by accidentally snapping a leaf or brushing up against a spike simply because I want to maintain their status quo in the grow space. So you see, it's a fine balance of really, really wanting to see our orchids bloom, especially during the months of the year when they do bloom. It's cold, gloomy, miserable and horrible outside and they bring us this gorgeous amount of color where nothing else in nature really lights up and the maintenance and care that they still require, which includes supplements, which includes wiping leaves. Well, the decision is a personal one. I prefer to make sure that my orchid stays healthy, hoping for the next go around 
hoping for a better bloom show next year and I am quite okay with the little that I'm getting this year. And I have accepted that this is what it is. I get a little bit this year, my orchid is healthy and that to me is the most important thing. So don't think you are not getting it right if your fowl doesn't ever get the same impressive bloom count that you bought it with initially. If your conditions are anywhere similar to mine or even if a single point was not quite right as I mentioned with what is going on with my Phalaenopsis collection but your fowl still blesses you with the blooms that she does then enjoy them. That is the most important thing. Not everyone has the best circumstances at their disposition to have massive sprays of blooms but the fact that we have blooms even even though it's only some, that is the most important thing. I hope that this video was a little bit encouraging and not something that you should feel disappointed about. There is an added benefit to all of this. Every fowl here that hasn't bloomed or has had bud blast, maybe even my lemon sherbet here will blast its buds now that I brought it outside. They will now all be focusing and pushing their hormones into vegetative growth which is fantastic because new leaves means new nodes means another chance for new spikes to develop the next go around. So you see there's nothing negative about getting a lesser bloom count as long as your fowl is healthy and it's not really that bad a thing either if a fowl did blast her buds because roll on vegetative growth. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you have any questions, ask away. I can be more specific because every single one of my Phalaenopsis on this table, each is different. They might be lumped up and be called Phalaenopsis complex hybrids, but I can tell you they are all different and not just size and bloom in preferences when it comes to how much fertilizer, how much light, and being fussy about not handling a little bit of a draft. <laughs> Lesson learned. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.